Welcome to the PI Education Monthly Webinar. Uh, this is August 2020. It's been kind of a crazy summer here um, in the United States and the world in general, I think. Um, I am very much excited to be here um, and very much excited uh, to say that we have um, we have a sponsor for this pod, for this webinar, uh, and that is Psionix Cameras. Uh, they have been kind enough to sponsor us for the month here at uh, Pursuit Magazine and PI Education. And one of the reasons we um, we agreed to do this with them is we don't normally do advertising on Pursuit Magazine. We occasionally do, but when we do, we like for it to be a product or a service that we totally believe in and totally uh, get and understand and think is useful for private investigators. We have partnered with um, some database companies in the past. Uh, but when it comes to gadgets and toys and stuff like that, we tend to limit our advertising <clears throat> pretty hard. Um, but when I got uh, to talking to the Sionix folks, um, I was immediately impressed with the way they approached the business, number one. And number two, I was kind of blown away by the camera. Anyway, I'm Hal Humphreys. I'm your host. This is the monthly webinar for PI Education and Pursuit Magazine. We're glad you're here. Uh, Scott Stover is joining me today. Scott is a private investigator, uh, does a lot of surveillance work. I want to be clear about this up front. Um, neither Scott, I don't think Scott is, but neither Scott nor I are attorneys. If you have legal questions, call your attorney, ask them. We are not offering legal advice here. Um, almost always when we talk about surveillance, someone asks about expectation of privacy and stuff, and stuff like that. I have some opinions on those uh, issues, but my opinions are just my opinions and I am not an attorney, so they're not legal opinions. Um, before you go off and do something on surveillance that might get you in trouble, talk to an attorney and make sure that it's okay. Um, so again, Scott Stover is joining us today. Um, Scott, if you don't mind, I'm going to unmute you real quick. Let's see if that'll work. There we go. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, what you do, and kind of how long you've been in this business. Cause you look like an awful young man to be a, 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 a total pro at this business. <laughs> well, I uh, appreciate the compliment about the age. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a retired police officer. I did my 25 years here uh, in public safety uh, in South Carolina. I live in Rock Hill, which is up near Charlotte, North Carolina, but I'm familiar with uh, all parts of the state because I work for Whitesell Investigative Services. And uh, we have offices in Charlotte, North Carolina, Rock Hill, South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, and now Columbia, South Carolina as well. And uh, so we, 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 we're pretty much all over the state. And, um, and uh, I am, like I say, a retired law enforcement officer, did my 25 years. I uh, got kind of bored after I retired and I tried to do a little handyman stuff here and there. And I just couldn't find anything that would fit. So reluctantly, I said, you know what? I don't want to go back to wearing the uniform, but I may have a few skills that may be helpful. I know I got a lot, had a lot to learn for the private investigator to, or the, of the private sector rather. And uh, so I gave it a shot and I called uh, Jeremy Whitesell up one day and I said, hey man, I would like to try to give this a shot. I don't know anything about private investigation. I know a little bit about investigation and law enforcement, but you give me a chance. And, and he, you know, I'm not sure he really wanted to hire me, but he did. And uh, here we are. I'm the case manager for Whitesell Investigative Services out of Rock Hill now. That is, uh, that is fantastic. And how long have you been doing this work, Scott? Um, this work, about 15 minutes now. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, you know what, compared to folks like yourself and other people in this business, it probably is about 15 minutes. But I've been, in, uh, I've been working for Jeremy now for just a little over a year, and I've okay. learned a whole, lot of, a whole lot from the industry, uh, to include yourself. Uh, and other people here in South Carolina. And I'm just grateful for everybody that's teaching me the things that I need to know about working in this. Well, I got to say, um, you know, I've, I've presented with the South Carolina um, Association. I've presented at North Carolina's conference a couple of times and that the Carolinas has some of the best PI community in the country. They seem to look out for each other and support each other and lift each other up. And there's not a whole lot of backbiting and snarking going on. So I, I, I like working with the folks over there. 
um, and I enjoy uh, presenting at their conferences. And, um, you know, in this industry, when you can find um, a PI association that does a really good job of supporting their members, that's, that's something to, to brag about. Yeah, we're, we're fortunate here in the Carolinas, both North and South Carolina. You're right. Thank you. Adam. Yeah. Um, so let's just kind of dive right in here. Um, we've got exactly one hour's worth of time allocated to this, and I have got to stop right at 1230 at the very latest. Um, so let's dive right in and talk a little bit about surveillance in general. What kind of surveillance work do you do typically? Well, how we we do um, we do all different types of surveillance work. In the different cases we work, we do work criminal cases. Although uh, Glenn Harrell is is our criminal investigator here, I do because of my background. I do some some of that with him, and there's some there's some uh, surveillance that's needed in there. But uh, on our domestic side, which I'm the case manager of, we do. Uh, we do surveillance on, on any types of cases. We'll, we'll work child custody cases. We work uh, insurance fraud cases. We work personal injury cases, uh, child custody, adultery, you name it. We work it all. And, uh, and I found that every single case we work, we have to do some type of surveillance on. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the surveillance work is, you know, I hear a lot of people kind of, downplaying surveillance or, oh, I don't do domestic work or I don't do this. And here's the thing. We're all working professionals. There is absolutely no shame in playing for the money and doing the work that is going to pay and surveillance work pays. Yes. Yes. Um, and like I said, before we got started, I did a surveillance job uh, a year ago. First one I'd done in quite some time. Um, and I did the entire surveillance with my iPhone. Now, Luckily for me, all of the surveillance was uh, daytime surveillance. It was a child custody thing. We we're getting the dad picking up the kid with the girlfriend in the car at school and stuff like that. So it was pretty easy to do. But, um, you know, probably 12 years ago, I spent a good bit of money, upwards of a couple thousand dollars uh, to buy a night vision monocular. And this, I can't remember the brand, but it, it had a it had a data card, like an SD card you could pop in the bottom. It would take photographs. Uh, it had a, the old school RCA video and audio out thing. Um, it was a really cool little camera, but the image quality was horrible. Um, but the psionics camera, talk to me about that a little bit. Well, we discovered psionics, I guess, somewhere around last mm, September, October timeframe. Jeremy purchased one, uh, thought it looked, looked like it would be something useful for us. He, he brought it into my office one day and he says, here, I, play around with this thing. See what it does. He says, I've just looked through it and it's pretty impressive to me. See what you think about. So I took it and I started playing around with it and using it. And I gave it to uh, one of my lead investigators. And I said, here, take this out on a case, play around with it. If you get something great, if you don't, it's okay. Um, he brought it back to me. He says, man, this thing is great. He says, you can see in the, in the, in the dark. He says, I don't know what kind of technology this is, but I like it. So, um, so that, that's where it all started with the Sonics camera for us. And it's just going it's just bloomed for our agency and it has taken off. So. I love it. I love it. So let's take just a minute here. I'm going to share this screen um, and see if we can show folks the Sionics website. And the reason I'm doing this is I, I think, um, actually, I'm going to stop that and see if I can share a specific. Um, no, nope, here we go. Okay. So this is a Sionics website. Uh, can you see that there, Scott? Yeah. Yeah. It's up. Yep. Okay. Um, there's nothing uh, blocking it or anything like that. No, not at all. It looks good. Okay. So when I first looked at this website, you know, you scroll over, you see the cameras available and there's the Aurora Black, the Aurora Pro, the Aurora and the Aurora Sport. Um, you see, you know, law enforcement and governments, military history, search and rescue law enforcement, those kind of things. Uh, they got a little thing on how night vision works. Um but the thing they, they, they put on here that, that I was kind of blown away by, and I'm trying to find this, um, they put some images on here. Um, and let's see if we can, videos, here we go. 
That's fine. All right. So, um, this is IR laser range footage, the Aurora standard. Um, and I think this is it. We probably won't get any audio with this, but. So I'm going to stop that. Scott, when you see that video the way it is, I mean, it looks like it was taken maybe just after five o'clock in the afternoon or like dusk. Right. What, time you, what time do you think that was shot? You know, I would say it was, I would say it was probably taken well after nine o'clock would be my guess. Yeah. So looking at it again, I mean, that that's, that's basically total darkness and that's the image this camera is getting. I saw these videos. I'm like, oh, that's just not possible. <laughs> not possible. I mean, this is insane. No, that's not nighttime. It's like they're filming this in Alaska. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it blew me away at the quality. So when, when I got my Psyonix camera, I took it out, you know, it's, it's an interesting little camera. Um, and I want to show this because I had some struggles with this because I'm a bit of a, a adult when it comes to new equipment, but getting to the battery and getting to the, um, the, the storage card, there's a little detent back here. You pull that down and the whole back eyepiece comes off of the camera. So you got the eyepiece here um, and it's got a little digital plug on it. So it feeds that. But inside here is where the battery lives and the uh, mini SD card. They live inside there. And then this fits back over and clicks into place and you've got your fully functional camera. Um, but once that's done, um, and I'm going to tell you this story because I, I think it, it kind of illuminates the right word for um, this conversation on Saturday this past weekend, the uh, man who introduced Kim and me, uh, he was our flight instructor way back in the day, and he taught Kim how to fly, and he taught me how to fly. Um, his name is Volker, and Volker is uh, a flight instructor. He's a corporate pilot now, but before that, he was in the German Special Forces. So he has played with some night vision stuff way back in the day. Uh, he was out at the out at the river with us this past weekend on Saturday, and it was dark outside. And I said, "Have a look through this camera and tell me what you think." And Falker goes, "Okay." And he looked at me, and goes, "Whoa!" <clears throat> and that's the reaction I get from everybody that looks through the thing, like, "What?" And if it, you have to kind of take it down and look at the scene in real time, and then look through it again to realize it's such a stark difference. You know, it is, it is amazing. It is, it, it's a huge difference. And I, the first time I really took it out and played with it in the backyard and did some testing out at my house was I was looking into the backyard, into the neighbor's backyard, not spying on the neighbors, but just looking into their backyard. And uh, I couldn't see, I knew that they had a, uh, a, a storage building out back. Well, I couldn't see that storage building with the naked eye. But I had a, uh, I had a, a good starlight. I had, uh, it wasn't a full moon, but there was a moon out. And uh, so I turned the Psyonix camera on. I looked through it and it looked like the video that you just showed off of their website. I could see everything clear as day. And I had to do that. I had to take it down and put it back up. And I actually took a few shots and put it on LinkedIn to show, hey man, look at the difference. This is crazy. And, um, you know, we've just, we've been hooked on it ever since. I won't get into it just yet unless you want to, but at some point, uh, I use it also. I, one of my hobbies is airsoft. And man, we use these <laughs> things in airsoft all the time. So. <laughs> so how do you use it in airsoft? Well, we use it to uh, to see the opposing force that may be coming to us when we're in the woods at night, uh, okay. doing night games, or if we're in an urban environment where we're playing. Uh, some of the guys are really good at this, and they've mounted them on helmets. So they, they have the helmet mounts with the flip downs and uh, they go all out. I mount mine to my, my, my airsoft rifle when I just look at it that way. But uh, some of the guys go all out with these things. So there's so many different uses and, and there's so many different platforms, I guess, you could use this on, uh, whether it be law enforcement. I would love sure. to see if I was back in law enforcement, I wish I had one of these in my car. Um the uh, private investigative industry, we, we, we enjoy using it. We've solved six cases now based on this one camera. Yeah, and I want to talk about some of those cases. Um, I know we can't talk specifics of names and stuff like that, but let's, let's go through a couple of cases and 
how this specific camera made a difference for you and how it solved and won cases in court. So let's let's just kind of talk about those real quick. And before we do that, before we do that, um, I do want to point out that um, for the folks that are watching on YouTube, uh, the crew from the Psyonix uh, company, they are in the YouTube channel right now and they're available to answer questions. So if you want to post your question via text, um, they're in the room and they can answer your questions. If you have specifics about uh, the technology involved, how to use a camera, what it costs, what the options are, what things you can attach to it and all that business. The Sionics folks are in the room, so hit them up with questions. I'm, I know they're thrilled to answer them. Um, but coming back to, uh, let's talk about a case that you, you use the Sionics camera on and how it helped and, and, and how you used it. Okay, great. And, and we can talk about as many as you want to, because like I say, there's six of them so far that we've solved. Um, and without using names um, and, and giving very specifics, because some of these are still in litigation. But I will tell you, the very first case I used it on, um, I started carrying it with me everywhere I, everywhere I would go, both day and night, just because it's a, it's, it's a very simple, easy to use, small platform that I can stick in a cargo pocket in my pants and I can go anywhere with it. So we were working a case and this particular case was in rural South Carolina, very low light, if any light at all. It was in the middle of, um, in the middle of the woods, uh, a mobile home that we were watching. Um, and we were needing to see uh, a target and a paramour come together. We were trying to show opportunity and we were trying to show inclination. Well, I have several, just like you and, and everybody else in, a, in, in the room right now, we all have several different cameras that we use, whether it be our iPhone or whether it be a, 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 a Sony AX100 or whatever we use, we, we've got several different ones. So I could not get the shot I needed with my low lux camera that I normally use. It was, it was one I showed ghost figures when they would walk because of the, of the, uh, the, the, the way the technology was. Um, and I just could not get what I needed. So I said, you know what? Let me try this little camera that we bought. Let's see how well it worked. So I pulled it out and I was able to get a um, kiss in a, in a car. They were sitting in a truck. I was able to look inside through the window and see them in that truck with this camera, uh, clear as day. I was able to see them when they swapped seats because she was actually or he was actually driving her vehicle. So then they swapped places. They got out or he got out. She got in the driver's seat. Um, he proceeded to lean in and kiss her again. So I'm getting all kinds of great footage and it was all I could do to keep from shouting out, uh, you know, hooray, I've got the money shot. Uh, but that was our very first one that we worked and I was able to capture everything we needed on the Sionix camera where otherwise I would not have, I, I would have never seen any of that. You can take a low lux camera. You can take, a DSLR that will open up the aperture as wide as you can open it. Like you can do all of these things, um, but you always end up with a trade-off um, in image quality and visibility and that stuff. And there's just a certain amount of light that you have to have for normal camera sensors to work. Um, and this thing, do you know, Scott, the technology behind what makes it light up? Well, the, the only thing that I can speculate is it has something to do with Harry Potter. I don't know. It's some, <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> it's, it's some kind of magical stuff that they put in this camera. Um, I, I, what I know, I'm very, I, I'm a layman when it comes to this type of technology, but what, from what I understand, it is a, it is a, it is a, um, a, a uh, starlight, low light uh, technology that collects that light in and, uh, and we're able to see what we see through the camera chip uh, based on that technology. I have no clue. I know the guys at Sionix would, can explain it, but it's way above my technology. I'm, I'm imagining like a, a little vial with some like yeah. liquid that they pour in there and it just goes and it, and it works. It is. <laughs> um, we're, getting some, we're getting some really good questions from the field right now. Um, 
first question was, you know, are there different models of this camera? I believe there are four models available. Um, and those vary in price and capabilities, I guess. Um, and I know the Cyanix folks are, are there answering uh, some of the questions. So Bill uh, Bobrowski says, yes, four models available. Um, and then there's a question of date and time stamp. Um, how do you deal with that, Scott? Because I know that it will be in the metadata if you set the date and time on the camera, but yes. I don't think it shows up on the image. How do you deal with that? Yeah, the way we do that is everything that we upload video wise, whether it's from the Sonics camera, cell phone or, or any other platform, we run it through um, investigator video editing program and the metadata, it pulls it right off and puts it onto the video for us when we do the upload. Okay. So, and then that burns it onto the image for your client so they have it. And it uses the metadata to do that. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So one important thing, when you first turn on your Psyonix camera, there is a notice that pops up that says, please set date and time. Um, that's the first thing you want to do. Set the date and time, get it right. I think once you do that, you're pretty well good. You might want to check it occasionally, but it, it's, it's going to be a, a good solid um, date and time. Um, I know a lot of times date and time stamp is critically important for um, investigators and in doing surveillance work, especially if you're doing um, insurance work where someone may say, or, or medical malpractice where they say, I'm fine early in the morning, but by three o'clock, I, you know, start to flag or whatever. So you've got to have date and timestamp on your video to prove that it was after they, you know, or before they said they could do whatever. That's right. um, let's see. We've got some other questions coming in that are pretty interesting. Um, date and time, date and time. Um, that seems to be a big one. Let's talk about the Zoom. So there's a there's a Zoom built in. It's a digital Zoom. So it's not an actual optical Zoom. How does this Zoom work on this thing? Well, it does. It's a it's a three time digital Zoom, um, and and it's incremental. So it's not a it's not a smooth flow. It's incremental. You press the button, it moves it up a little bit. You press it again, it moves it up another increment. Um, once you get to the top increment, I guess the, the number three on, on the, uh, on the uh, zoom, it's, it, it is kind of grainy because we all know how digital zoom is. We, uh, we all prefer optical. We, we wish we could have optical everything, uh, but there is some ways to overcome that that I found. Okay. Talk to me about that. So, okay. and, and I will say, you know, when I, when I use this uh, last weekend, um, I had the optical zoom and I was zooming in and this, this camera has audio on it. So it's just like a video camera. So we'll get audio. Um, as I'm zooming in, you can hear the click, click, click of the button on the audio function of the, of the camera. Um, so it is incremental. It steps forward a little bit at a time. I, I think I counted 10 clicks to get to the three time zoom. Um, and I had this, I had the same experience. It's not the sharpest image at that point. There are, um, there, there are a couple of ways you can fine tune the image with this little, I guess this is a diopter adjuster here um, that you can kind of crisp up the image if it's a little bit fuzzy. And there's another one here on the side that does basically the same thing as far as I can tell. Um, but if you really need to reach out and touch someone, what would you do? Because it seems like if this only goes three times zoom and you're way, way away, you're kind of screwed. What, 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 how do you fix that? Yeah, well, what we've learned, uh, and, and, the, and the Airsoft guys have learned this and, and, and have shared it with us, but um, also some of the folks that are out there hunting hogs, I guess, they've learned how to do this too. Um, any type of pest or rodent that they, they, they may be hunting after dark um, is to use a, a monocular, such as this one right here, just something small, inexpensive um, monocular. And then you can, because both of the camera and the monocular has a point to where you could put a, uh, a mount on it. And basically you simply marry them up. And uh, I kind of did something cheap. I went the cheap route, man. You can <laughs> go with some expensive stuff, but I kind of went with a cheap route and just took a piece of bar stock, drilled two holes in it, got me a quarter inch bolt and stuck it in both of them to make it look like that. And now I can get a, a better quality 
without having to hit the zoom much on the camera. I mean, you have to hit it once or twice just to keep from having that black ring around your image. But you can reach out pretty far with this little guy here, even in the daytime or at night. Okay, that's fantastic. And and I'm assuming, so since these are the standard camera mount, like it's a foot mount for a camera. So it's a standard like thread that you would see on any camera. Um, so it will fit on top of a tripod or a monopod. Um, but I know that we have at PI Education, we have a camera rack that we can affix this camera to and the next one to. Um, now those camera racks, if you go to Amazon, you can find them. If you go to B and H photo and video, you can find those camera rails and racks and they're fantastic. And they're designed specifically for this. But if you don't want to pay that kind of money, uh, Scott, are there any other options you can think of? Well, um, one of the things is Psionics actually sells a, a, um, a mount for the camera, um, for a scope rail. So like your Picatinny rail that goes on top on your rifle, right. um, they actually make a, a, a mount, a rail mount for it. So if you want to marry them up on that type of rail system, if you've got a, a, a one at the house that you can take off of a rifle or if you're if you're putting it on a rifle, uh, either way, you can you can marry them up with that by using the I think it's I think it's 50 bucks is what it costs from Sionics. Sure. And it's well worth the price. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and how did you get yours to work together? You went to Lowe's or Home Depot and cobbled it together like a pro? Yeah. Yeah, I went and got a piece of flat bar stock uh, out of the metal section, and I cut it to the length that I needed it cut to. And uh, I took the quarter 20, I think is what it is, quarter inch 20 uh, screws, and uh, I simply made sure I drilled the holes in the correct spot, and uh, I just attached it together that way. I don't have it now that way, but uh, – that's kind of how I just married them up. You can also put duct tape. We love, <laughs> investigators love duct tape. You duct tape them together like this and it works perfect. I love it. I love it. And, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, everything we do is based on improvising and using the resources we have. Um, but I know a lot of folks in this community um, play in the black rifle set. They play in airsoft. They have... Uh, weapons experience. So they may have the tenny rails you're talking about and be able to couple these things together like that. And that would be a really um, handy way to do it. And I think the psionics folks, you know, their, their background is apparently pretty heavy military. Um, and obviously they're going to have some mounts for those kind of things. Um, we've got some more questions coming in. I want to get to those uh, right. We've got about three minutes before the halfway mark and I'll take a break then, but um so there are questions about time for recording and battery life. Um, I have not personally played with it enough to know what the battery life is like. I can answer the SD capability because, I mean, the SD capabilities, like those micro SD cards, you can get them up to what size? Like uh, a two, 256 gig. Yeah, I mean, you, you can get as much like storage is cheap. They're easy to come by. Um, so the SD capacity, I don't think is a really big issue, but battery life does come into play. So have you run into a case where you, you run out of battery? I have. And actually the, the, you can buy extra batteries for these. The okay. batteries are quite small just for the simple fact the, um, the platform is small. Uh, I mean, you're, you're talking about the battery here is, is, uh, uh, uh 1100 milli hour, uh, battery. It's okay. very small, right? But, what I learned is now, of course, it's just like your regular camera. Have extra batteries and have them charged so you can pop these things in. You oh. get, about two, get about two hours off of this guy right here. But okay. what I learned in, in, in uh, Tony over at, um, at Psionics helped me with this, and he got me in touch with the right people. And, uh, <laughs> man, you can attach because on the side of this camera, the charging port is a micro – charging port for your micro usb right well i got to thinking about it and he told me he says man why don't you i got your problem solved right here because i wanted him to reinvent the camera for me and put a giant battery in hmm. and he says no i got the solution for you right here he says get you an acre charging device the the battery pack yeah he says plug it in and plug the micro port into here like you're charging your camera he yeah. says, man, you can get 64 hours off of this thing, depending on how big of a, uh, uh, of a, uh, a charging device you have. 
Right. So I, I don't even worry about that at battery battery anymore because I learned that. And there's certain applications where I use that type of charging device uh, when I use this remotely. And I know we can probably talk about that after the break um, right. of how to use this in a covert way without actually having to hold it with you all the time. Right. Okay. Well, good, good, good. Um, it is right at 12 o'clock, top of the, uh, the hour. And I'm Hal Humphreys. This is the monthly webinar from PI Education and Pursuit Magazine. I'm joined today by Scott Stover. Uh, we are sponsored today by Psionics Video Cameras, and we're excited to be here talking about those cameras because they're a fantastic little tool. Um, we have um, some things coming up next month. We, we've, we're going to offer the criminal defense course live again. And if anybody's interested in taking that, we'd love to see you there. Um, there is a discount code. It is SUMMERCE. Uh, that's good for 15% off and that's for any course you want to take. Um, so we'll be offering the criminal defense course again, uh, next month. We have sold it out the past two times we've offered it. So, uh, as soon as you see that pop up, sign up for it if you're interested, because it goes pretty quick. Um, we've had, we've got some people on a waiting list for the next one. Um, as always, if you need to get continuing education, uh, I know a lot of people are kind of upset about not going to conferences this year. Nobody's doing conferences right now. Um, come see us at PI Education. We'd love to help you out. If you've never taken online CE or if you've been opposed to it, this is a good chance to, to get a feel for what it's like. Um, and if you want to join us for one of our live um, in real time courses, it is not the same as just standard online. It's me sitting here at a camera at, at the camera uh, going through slide decks, answering questions, and dealing with things with people. And I think it's a really fun way uh, to go through this process. Um, finally, uh, this afternoon at 5 o'clock Central Time, Pursuit Magazine and PI Education will be hosting our um, bi-monthly uh, happy hour. And I can tell you I've had three full weeks of 16-plus hour days and I'm threatening to have at least three or four cocktails in and through me by the time we get done with this happy hour. So join us tonight. It could get entertaining. Um, getting back to the topic at hand, uh, Scott Stover is with me. Scott's a PI over in South Carolina, does a lot of surveillance work, uh, retired law enforcement, has crazy experience as an investigator. Um, and we're here talking about the psionics uh, video camera. Um, Scott, there's been one question that, that I've had several people ask me over the past couple of weeks since we've kind of been talking about this camera. What about daytime usage? Does it work as well in the daylight as a normal video camera? Absolutely. Um, the, 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 the only difference is, is the, that we've talked about already is it's only three times digital. Zoom. That's, that's the biggest difference. Now, what I've noticed is it has a crisp, crystal clear image when you take daytime um, daytime shots with it, whether it be photographs, because you can take photographs with it, or if it's video and they're crystal clear. Um, I've used mine during the daytime. And let me tell you how, on one case, let me tell you how I used it. Um, I took it with me and, uh, and you, I know the viewers are going to laugh about this. This is old school gumshoe, the guy wearing the hat, reading a newspaper kind of thing. There, I have a Paramore and a Target that is supposed to be having lunch at Panera Bread Company. And I know the exact time that they're supposed to be there. So I get there. Sure enough, they're there. I can't carry my, my regular camera with me. People are going to notice that. So I take my Sonics camera. I put it inside of a manila envelope and I seal it up. And I walk over and I sit down. They're sitting outside having, having lunch. I order my food, I go outside, I sit down and I'm waiting there. I open my manila envelope and I take a, a blank piece of paper that's in there, I take it out and I lay the open manila envelope now on the table with the camera pointing right at them and I proceed to look over my blank piece of paper. I record the entire lunch time with them. Um, we, they, they depart, uh, walking back to their car, I get up, I walk back behind him a couple hundred feet I watch them go to their car, they embrace, they kiss, and I get it all with the Sonics camera in the daytime. I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, 
Another quick question uh, from our pal Sam Petito out in Colorado. Sam asks, can it be charged from a cigarette lighter or run continuously from one? Do you know the answer to that? You know what? I, I don't know. I've never tried that because I do know that because you can uh, you can uh, plug the uh, USB cord into your cigarette lighter outlet and it does have the, uh, the micro USB attachment. So I've never tried that. That's a good question. And I'd like to know that answer too. And we'd have to, we'd have to defer that to the folks at Psionics. But I'd like to know that too, because if it's possible, then I could just sit in my car and plug it in and I could use it that way. Fair enough. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be totally useful. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm looking down here because I'm looking through the uh, YouTube feed and um, let's see, there's gain adjustment, white balance. Um, I don't see an answer to that question, but I know the Psionics folks are in the room. Uh, and hopefully they can answer. Uh, you can charge and run from the cigarette lighter charger. Yes, that's from Psionic. So that's great. That's fantastic. Right. So at that, you can have this thing in your car and recording pretty much nonstop with power. Yeah, and that's uh, that's something else that I want to mention is, um, and now that I know that I can plug it in directly, that's even better. But uh, the folks over at Ram Mount sent me a couple of mounts. And this is, this is one of the things that, that Kim had specifically asked me to ask you about and talk about is your setup for your surveillance vehicle and how you use these things in the field. And I think, honestly, this is one of the things I think a lot of people are going to get a kick out of. So go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I, Ram Mount sent me a, uh, a couple of amounts and uh, I'd never, I've never bought anything from them before. I didn't really know about them. I didn't have a need for them, or at least I didn't think I did until they introduced me to a mount that they have that will mount to the Sonics camera and I can put it on my windshield and I can view out of any window, whether it be the windshield or the back window, wherever I need to. And I can record not only in, in daytime, I can record in twilight, which this camera has that mode as well. And I can record in the darkness. One of the questions that everybody's gonna have about that though, how does it shoot through the windshield? Because if it shoots through a window and it's got IR, isn't there going to be a reflection? No IR on this bad boy. It's that magic Harry Potter stuff that makes this work. I keep muting myself and forgetting to unmute myself. We had another question earlier that I was kind of interested in as well. Um, Ed asks, any video been tested in courts, accepted or dismissed based on le legality in various jurisdictions or expectations of privacy? So if you're in a situation where this thing sees into a dark area that someone otherwise would feel like they had an expectation of privacy, um, have you had any issues with that at all? Um, we have not. And, and one of the things we try to, to have our investigators to not do is to, we don't want them videoing if there is an expectation of privacy. Right. Uh, we, we don't want them, you know, if, if people feel like that they that behind that I hate my neighbor fence, you know, the six foot wood fence that you can't see through, you yeah. know, we try to tell them, look, if, if, it's best not to video back there if you can help it. If you do, eh, okay, so be it, we'll try to use it. But we haven't had any kickback so far on it. And there have been times that I've used it in, in questionable times. One such case, and if we've got a second to talk about it, absolutely, is a, is a case um, where uh, the, the, the paramour and the target were meeting up at a club, um, a restaurant bar type situation. And they would, uh, they would meet there quite frequently. So what we noticed is they would go there, they would hang out outside in the dark area behind the, uh, behind the club. They'd just generally be smoking cigarettes. But one of my investigators decided, hey, I want to try that, that night vision camera, that Sonics camera. Can I take it? And I was like, sure. I'm glad you even thought about it because I can't keep up with all the cases that we have to tell people. So I said, yeah, absolutely. Grab one, take it out, see what you can get. <clears throat> she took it out. She went to the, to the club. She set up. She watches them come out. They get in the Target's car in the back seat behind this place where uh, it's total darkness, there's no lights. So she's videoing them. So there could be could be some expectation of privacy inside of a vehicle, maybe, I don't know. Some judges could argue that, I guess, or attorneys. Right. Nonetheless, she kept rolling with the video and she was rolling through 5% tint on her window. So she's already got darkness. 
She's right. got 5% window tint, which is completely unlawful. But anyway, she, she, she has that. And she's videoing through all of this. We still get a crisp, usable video of both of them getting out of the back seat of the car, putting their clothes back on, massaging each other's legs where they got a cramp because these people are in their 40s. And we got everything we needed. So another case solved with the Sonics camera. It seems like it seems like they got everything they needed too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, the expectation of privacy issue is one that you need to um <clears throat> if you're gonna use this camera, um, I kind of you know, ask your attorney what they think about it. Um now I, I will tell you this a lot of um the uh, family law attorneys that I have worked for would say, take the video, take the video, take the video. Um, talk to your lawyer very seriously about what, you know, what constitutes an expectation of privacy and where you can and cannot shoot. Um, kind of the rule of thumb that I've always worked with, if they're in a public place, even if it's dark, it's accessible by anybody, it's available to anybody, then it's fair game. Um, if they're in their backyard behind the six foot fence and, you know, don't pop the sick gump on a pole and shoot video over the <laughs> fence. That's just asinine. Um, somebody asked, uh, how is stabilization anti-shake feature? Do you ever use that? And how does it work? You know what? I have never had an issue with stabilization on this camera whatsoever. Okay. Um, and, and I've used it, like I say, not only have I used it on a boat, which I have in the middle of the evening in the, at night, I've used it right. on a boat, I've used it on a boat dock. No problems whatsoever. Um, and, and not only that, I'll go just, I've talked just briefly from the, from the airsoft side, you know, you're running around playing this game out in the middle of the woods or wherever you're at. And I, again, other than the camera moving itself because it's mounted to your rifle, right. I've had no problems with the anti-shake issue. There's none at all. But if you're in an airsoft situation or a, a situation where you have it mounted on a weapon and you draw up like that, I mean, the second you stop and look through the thing, you've got a good, clear image. Perfectly stabilized. Love it. Okay. Um, I'm going to share screen again, and we're going to walk through some of the things that psionics have available here um, as helmet mounted accessories and other accessories. Um, so as you can see here, can you see that, Scott? Oh, yeah. It looks great. <clears throat> um, this is a helmet mount that they have. They've got... Uh, two other ones here that are, are mounts of various kinds to put the camera in a tactically appropriate spot in front of you so you can see at night while your hands are busy doing other things. So that's pretty amazing. For private investigators, it might not be the most useful tool, but a variation on the seam to mount it to the car would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and these mounts, I mean, if a mount is called a helmet mount, that doesn't mean you can only mount it on a helmet. You can use it for different things. Um, so there's that. Uh, we've got the Picatinny rail mount here uh, that, that Scott was talking about, and this will put it onto your um, rail on your weapon. Uh, and I'm assuming that's how you have it attached to your airsoft rifle, Scott? It is. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, Boat and overland mounts, we've got the standard, you know, ball hitch mounts here that you can you can put up in your car uh, in, in, in different places. Uh, this is not uh, dissimilar from, you know, what you would see sold for use with um, a GoPro or something like that. Uh, and these are all made by Ram mounts. Here's a here's a good image of the uh, what looks like the Psionics Sport on a boat rig. Uh, you can see how they've got it mounted to the bottom there. There's that threaded hole on the bottom of the camera. You can see right there um, that fits onto the mount and it's snug and secure. It's a great little thing. Now, Scott, let me ask you this. This is showing um, a display that is attached to the camera. Do you ever use it like that? Absolutely. And that's where it comes in. And it's amazing. It does have Wi-Fi capability. So oh, wow. the, the way I've used it on Wi-Fi capability is a couple of different ways. One using those RAM mounts, I can leave it. I can leave it posted up in my car, and I can walk away from my vehicle, and I can view it on my Android uh, or or um, uh, iPod. I mean, sorry, iPad, Android, my computer. I can view it from a distance, or I can put it. And and this is some people think I'm crazy for doing this, but I, I take chances. Oh, you got muted there. Sorry. Scott, you locked up on me. 
Well, while Scott is um, locked up on us, and we hope we can get him back because I surely enjoy chatting with Scott. I'm going to go. Th there we are. Al, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, it was just a little difficulty. Sorry about that. <clears throat> no um, worries. Where, where I was talking about is this. Uh, it, it, I put this camera. <laughs> you can see it. Mine's camouflaged. <laughs> I put my camera on a piece of alt red rod. And I stick it in a, in, a, in a shrub or in a tree or in a bush somewhere on the side of someone's house or the side of uh, the side of the road to see what I can see. And what I'll do is I'll park my vehicle a couple hundred yards away and I'll watch it from my car on my Android device. And that's a really good um, deployment of this device for surveillance use. If you can park your car on a street side somewhere where it's not unusual to have cars parked for a long period of time and set this thing up with a battery to charge it and then be three blocks away with your phone in your hand, watching what's going on. I mean, that's a great way to get good fixed surveillance over a decent amount of time without anybody being curious or wondering what's going on. That's right. And it's worked for us. Um, I, there's so many features of this camera that, that, I just find it so impressive. Look, Sonics, they're not paying me to do this. You're not paying me to talk to you. Um, everything is, um, you know, I, I just can't say enough. There's the technology in this thing and the price point of this thing is where it needs to be to where every private investigator should have one in their go bag. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, so let's just take a look at these cameras while we're here. The Aurora Sport is $599. Here it is on the screen. Um, it's a white camera, uh, which I don't find offensive at all. I know some people only want to deal with, you know, dark colored black cameras, but I think it's kind of a cool little camera. Uh, this is a really good depiction of, uh, the layout of the device and, and how it works. Um, it's got the, the, the bezel here on the side with the <clears throat> on off switch and you've got camera mode, video mode, um, loop mode, play mode, and then Wi-Fi and setup at the very bottom down there, um, on the top of the camera is where you've got your this your record button and then the the set and the the toggle switches to go through the different um modes and then up here at the top you can see where it says scene scene is where you're going to select what the ambient light is that you're dealing with so if you're in the daytime you switch it over here to day setting and it works just like a regular video camera um if it's somewhere between day and dark of night that twilight time you hit that middle range there where it says twilight. And then for the dark of night, you go all the way over to night. And that's when the Harry Potter fluid starts to flow through this thing. <laughs> and you get some, you get some really magic images. Um, has anyone tried to use this as a pole camera? Any answers on that? Any thoughts on that, Scott? <sighs> I did. I used it to look inside of a storage unit okay storage storage units like the uh the kind that you have that are enclosed uh, that are um uh, air conditioned climate controlled yep 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 I, I needed to see what was on the other side of that door well those climate control type of uh places um they don't the door the walls don't go all the way to the top Right. So a lot of times those are in former uh, big box retail stores that have gone out of business or something like that. So they've got these walls and then on top, there'll be some kind of chicken wire or security wire on top, but it's open to the top. Yes. And what I did was I put it on my monopod and I just simply raised it up over the wall and was able to look in to see what was actually inside that storage facility. And okay. we were able to get the answer to what we needed and was able to use it and, uh, it, it, from what I understand, it helped the attorney in his court uh, proceedings. Okay, well, that's that's really good. That's that's fantastic to hear. Um, Joe Cabreo says, uh, "What model do I have? I have the Aurora."
No, I don't know what's going on with it. It's uh it's lagging. Can you hear me now? Hey, we can hear you now, Al. There we go. Okay, well, let's just get rid of this fancy microphone to do this the old school way. Um, so what cameras do you have, Scott? Well, uh, I have one of the original ones that that came in, that came uh, came out with the very first one they came out with was the one that uh, Jeremy Weitzel bought for the company. So we've got that one. It was a black and green version. Okay. Um, and then um, the version that I use um, all the time, I have the sport and uh, I camouflaged it. Okay. And that works well for, so you got the sport and just camouflaged it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Sonics has got somebody that they may have even partnered with that, that sells the camouflage kit um, okay. or um, I just camouflaged the one that I had. I can't camouflage it myself. And I know that people might ask about, well, does that void the warranty? I don't know, but I haven't really worried about it. I, you know, I'm a chance taker anyway. So um, mm -hmm. the only thing that I will say is that no matter what version you purchase, uh, because I understand that the Pro is even better uh, as far as the chip size, that it's, uh -huh. uh, the sensor size, um, and it gets uh, yeah, an even better image. But I've had plenty of good luck out of the uh, Sport. Uh, the Black works just the same way, has the same technology. But one thing I will say that if somebody purchases this, this camera, I would suggest that they purchase the external lens protector. And the reason why, it comes with a plastic one already on the camera. So you're not, right. you're not gonna scratch your lens, but I have scratched my lens protector. So there is an external one that you can put on as an extra filter. Um, so I would, I would always recommend doing that. Yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna share this screen with you. Can you see that right now? Yeah, yeah. So the top hat, the crash hat, and the aspis, those are all um, protectors you can put over the, uh, the camera to protect that lens and keep it from getting scratched up. That's really good advice there. Um, I don't know about the dimensions of this camera specifically. I know that um, it does not appear to have a threaded piece on the eye piece. So you could, you, I don't think there's an option for putting filters directly onto this, um, but those uh, lens protectors uh, are definitely a good thing to have uh, if you're gonna be using this camera. Um, let's talk a little bit more about, um, let's, we've got, I don't know, about six minutes, five minutes left. Um, tell us another case where you use this. Have you testified in court using this, this camera? You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brag on our admin staff for a minute. Our admin staff, um, they, they do a fantastic job of putting reports together for us. Um, we do things a little bit differently here than some, some companies do, but the, the reports that our uh, admin staff have put together with the use of this camera um, have been standalone reports. We haven't had to testify in court. Um, they were very, they were well put together. The video was accepted by the attorney and um, nobody has called us to testify on any of these cases at this point. That's fantastic. That, I mean, that's just the, 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 the joy of having good tools uh, is, is what that's about. Um, the reason I asked the question, I can almost imagine, you know, 
anytime I'm in court to testify, um, you know, sometimes a judge is kind of dismissive and like, oh, a private investigator, they might look down on you. But usually I get the, so that seems like a really cool job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's, there's almost always like a little, little conversation after I'm done testifying, if there's time, like, hey, how'd you get into this business? Like judges just dig what we do for some reason. <laughs> um, but I'm I, I would love to see somebody go into court, present evidence they gathered with this camera and have the attorneys and the judge. And I can imagine a judge saying, when did you take that video? What time was it? And are you sure you had the date and time set right? Cause that sure looks like daytime to me. Um, I think that would, I think that's going to happen at some point. Absolutely. Whether it happens with us or any of the viewers right now or yourself, somebody's going to end up going to testify in court about it. And it is, it's going to blow the judges away. Yeah. It's going to blow their minds. Um, so, I, you know, looking at psionics kind of history, I know they have some military background They they, they design stuff for the military. Um, and I know for the shooting crowd uh, and the hunting crowd, this is a, is a, is a fun uh, tool slash toy that you can add to your, your, your bevy of things that you use. Um, you know, I think for the shooting crowd, this falls more into the category of a toy than a tool so much. Um, but for private investigators, this is straight up a tool. Yeah. And you know, the thing about it is it's an affordable tool. I mean, we could go with a PBS 14 or some other version of night vision. It's not going to be a night vision camera. And we know that we want cameras. We want to record what we see. Um, plus those are going to give us either white phosphorus or that green phosphorus view. And it's not going to, it's going to give us images, but not like a color night vision camera like we have in the sun. Right. Right. No doubt. Um, and they're expensive. The Sonics camera is is three times less than, than one of those things. Yeah, it's it's um <clears throat> the price point is you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I've I've had a couple of people talk to me about the price point and their concern was, well, it's probably not really as as high quality as this higher priced stuff. And I'm <laughs> telling you, this thing feels like a real video camera, handy camera. It's 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 well constructed. It's a good piece of kit, and the technology they've got going on in here is is just fantastic. And they've just dialed in the price point to a spot where it makes sense. Yeah, and you know how they 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 started out reaching out early on to the boating industry, man, to people who are boat captains and and are, are on the water. So that tells you a little bit right there. They they have to be water resistant or waterproof. And they are. And that's the good, good thing about it. I can leave it outside. If I want to set it up as a covert camera, I can set it outside and do that and not have to worry about it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I'm going to see if this will work. I don't know if it will. Um, so let's see if we can play this. I'm going to share the screen. And we're just going to play little bit of this video. I've got it muted, so you can't really see, but this is, uh, can you see the screen now? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so this is, this is an actual image shot in our backyard with the Sony ES M2 mirrorless digital camera, really fantastic little camera um, with a 1.5 f-stop fixed lens on it. Um, and it is, I mean, you can barely, barely, barely see me on there. But when we switch to the psionics camera, um, which is right here in just a second, there we go. That's in the dead of night in our backyard with all of the lights turned off around us. And you can see back over my right shoulder there, there's some light source in my neighbor's yard, right? But this is in my backyard with zero extra illumination. And it's as dark possibly be back there that's fantastic Again, let's look at this this is with the psionics camera this is with the sony camera psionics sony i mean it's just absolutely ridiculous um the the the, the, the amount of light that it can gather and 
I will say this, you know, I've been in a couple of situations with this camera where I thought, okay, I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm going to see how dark it will go. There is a certain point at which it just, I mean, nothing's going to work. If there's no light in the environment to work with, there's a certain point at which nothing's going to work. But if you're with this thing and there's starlight or moonlight or any ambient light, it picks it up. Yeah, I'm going to also throw this out there too. A, a, a 940 N, NM uh, illumino, illuminator will work with this camera. So okay. if you have complete darkness, you can use that illuminator, a handheld illuminator or mount it to another, uh, another rail or another system. That okay. will help this camera. Okay, so if you're if you're in an actual like total dark situation, you can use the illuminator. Is that is that a little IR flashlight looking thing? It is. It is, and I believe there's I believe there's one of the models that Sonic sells that actually comes with that illuminator. Okay, interesting. So here's I'm I'm going to do this one more time, and and, and we're. We have officially gone over, which I don't like to do with this webinar, but I'm, I'm so excited about this camera. This is around 5.30 in the morning um, in my street here in Nashville, maybe five o'clock in the morning. Um, and this is with my iPhone. You can see in the bottom corner down there where the um, PI Education logo shows up there and goes away. That's the corner of my car. Um, I'm gonna press play and you can see my neighbor's car and the roof line of her house there, but there's her car. Right, and there's just total darkness back in here. Uh, but when I switch to the psionics camera, look at that. <laughs> and that is literally that psionics, that's iPhone. Psionics, iPhone. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, this is basically the exact same spot here and here. That's the psionics, and there's plenty of light, ambient light out there with the sun coming up around five o'clock in the morning. You can see that off in the horizon, but this is in the shadow, and it's 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 absolutely dark as night down in there. But when you pop that psionics camera, and that that to me, when I do these little videos to show it, I really just want to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth just to show people this is this is a real image taken, you know, with the camera in this situation and show them how good it works. Um, Scott, I've kept you for an hour, a little bit longer since we started earlier. I can't thank you enough for being here today. It's been a lot of fun. Love hearing the stories. Um, any parting words you want to share with the crowd before we head off? Absolutely, Hal. And I want to thank you uh, for having us on here. Uh, we love you. We love the magazine. We love the education and we're going to keep following you. Um, one last thing to say about the Sonics camera. It is not to replace your regular camera that you use every day. It is another tool in the toolbox for a private investigator to be able to get those shots that they need when they can't get it otherwise. Yeah, I love it. Great, great advice. Scott Stover, thanks so much for joining us. Um, the folks from Sonics, thank you so much for sponsoring uh, PI Education Pursuit Magazine this month. We have had a really fun time uh, playing with the Sionix camera. Uh, those of you in the room, if you get a chance, check it out. Um, I know that a couple of the models are sold out, but stick with them. Uh, pick one up if you can. They're a fantastic tool to have in your tool bag. Uh, and that is it for this month um, on, hang on one second, something that might let others see you. Okay. Um, are there any lights on? Oh, someone's asking about my, my videos that we showed earlier. Um, was there any light on that would, would let me be seen? And there was there was no light. Um, and the Sonics picked up on what, what light was available. So again, thanks for being here. 